Health Specialist for Whole Foods Market at our store in Franklin, Tennessee. And I'm here interviewing Mr. Will Harris from White Oak Pastures. So, Mr. Harris came to answer all our customers' questions about grass-fed beef. And um, can you tell us a little bit about um, what, what is grass-fed beef? <clears throat> uh, grass-fed beef is a return to the old way of raising cattle. My family's raised cattle on the same farm in Georgia since 1866. <clears throat> the first two generations, my great-grandfather and grandfather, raised grass-fed beef, uh, slaughtered it on the farm, and sold it locally. During my father's watch and mine, we industrialized and started feeding cattle corn in confinement. We used subtherapeutic antibiotics. We used uh, hormone implants. Uh, and we shipped cattle uh, long, long distances to Kansas or Nebraska to be finished confinement fed. <clears throat> that beef was sold through big multinational corporations, and that's what. 90, probably 99% of beef in this country is today. Uh, the grass-fed beef that we sell at Whole Foods markets is a return to the way my great-grandfather and grandfather did it. We raised cattle on our farm. They eat nothing except grass and hay. Uh, no hormones, no antibiotics, no pesticides. Uh, we built an abattoir, which is a packing plant on our farm and we sell the beef to Whole Foods that distributes it to customers in the South region, Mid-Atlantic region, and Florida region. Uh, as a matter of fact, the uh, abattoir we built was a $2.2 million processing plant and Whole Foods loaned us $450,000 under your producer loan program, so we're partners on that. And this, um, having the processing plant on the farm makes it uh, for a lot less stress for the animals. Doesn't uh, absolutely. The cattle, all, the cattle. Of, I'm sorry, that's all part of the step four? It is. <clears throat> the cattle are born and raised on the farm. And my cattle could actually, I'm a step four under the Global Animal Partnerships five step program. Uh, my beef, my cattle are step four. I could actually be a step five. There are one or two little uh, standards that I have a, a personal problem with. Uh, my chickens are a step five. Uh, we're in the process of building a chicken processing plant on the farm uh, right now. And the chickens will be available at Whole Foods at step five this August. Our plant will be the only plant in Georgia, Florida, or Alabama that processes free range chickens. And we're proud of that. And Whole Foods may partner with us on it as well. Yet to be determined. grass-fed beef is a little more expensive, but um, so many of our customers are looking for grass-fed beef for um, because they believe it's better nutritionally. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I can. Uh, grass-fed beef is a little bit higher in the meat case because it costs a little bit more to raise cattle this way. Uh, there's several reasons for that uh, that I can explain, but the benefit to the customer is one or more about four different things. Uh, one is from an animal welfare perspective. The way we raise our cattle is much gentler, a much gentler way for the animal. Uh, number two, or, the, or another one, no particular order, would be environmental sustainability. Uh, I believe we have a negative carbon footprint on our farm. We just won uh, the Governor's Environmental Stewardship Award for 2011, so it's a much greener way of producing food. Uh, another benefit is food safety. Uh, the chain is very short. The cattle go directly from me to Whole Foods without going through a lot of other hands, which could augment the safety of the product. 
And uh, the fourth is uh, nutrition, uh, uh, grass-fed beef. There are studies out there. First of all, let me say this. I'm a farmer, not a food scientist. Mm -hmm. But there are studies out there that show that grass-fed beef is higher in the good fats, conjugated linoleic acid, omega-3s. It's lower in overall fat. Uh, Grass-fed beef is also shown to be higher in some minerals and in beta carotene, so and conjugated linoleic acid. So it, it's it's thought to be a more healthy beef, and uh, I personally believe that. Although, uh, you know, again, disclaimer: I'm a farmer. difference between the life of um, that your cattle lead as opposed to uh, grain-fed cattle? I can. Uh, on our farm we try very hard to emulate the natural cycles of nature. Uh, uh, the Serengeti Plain in Africa is a great ecosystem and we try to emulate what happens there. <clears throat> My father was in the coastal plain, the Gulf Coast plain of Georgia. And uh, we used that same rotational grazing program that's used on the Serengeti plain. That is large island, large ruminants, in my case cattle, followed by small ruminants, in my case sheep, followed by birds, in my case chicken and turkey. Uh, it's a, a really magical system that does great things for the land and the impact on the animals is, is really good too. You know, our cows are out roaming all of their lives. You know, a, a cow, I believe, a cow was born to roam and graze and a hog was born to root and wallow and a chicken was born to scratch and peck. And those are instinctive behaviors that we endeavor to make possible for the animal. We, we create an environment that allows them to do that. <clears throat> in a uh, conventional industrial commodity beef production program, uh, good animal welfare really means you don't intentionally inflict pain and suffering on the animal. It doesn't mean that you give them an opportunity to express their instinctive behaviors. But that's what we do. Uh, another benefit to the animals in our system is they're allowed to eat what they evolved to eat, what they were created to eat, which in the case of cattle is grass. In, a, uh, in an industrial commodity system, grain feeding system, cattle are fed grain, corn, which is a remarkably high carbohydrate uh, foodstuff for, for ruminants. So it's, it's, like, uh, it's like if you fed your children nothing but sugar, you know, they gain weight. Oh, yeah. They, they, you know, you get a lot, which is what you sell as pounds. So from that very limited perspective, that's a good thing. But from the, the health and well-being of the animal, it's not a good thing. Uh, cattle have, we've always said cattle have four stomachs. They actually have one stomach with four sections. But that, that call it, they, they are ruminants. They, that digestive system is designed to eat cellulose, which is grass. And, and my cattle, when they're slaughtered, will be about 22 months old. They weigh about 1,000 pounds. And they'll have about two-tenths of an inch of back fat at the 12th rib. A feedlot grain-fed animal will be about 16 or 17 months old, will weigh about 1,300 pounds, and will have about five or six tenths of an inch of fat at the 12th rib, back fat. <clears throat> That's like a guy 5'11 that weighs 450 pounds. You know, it would never occur in nature. You know, my cattle, on the other hand, are like athletes. You know, they eat what nature meant for them to eat, and they move around roaming and grazing like nature intended for them to. So, you know, in my mind, when you're eating uh, a grain-fed animal 
and you're eating an animal that is unnaturally obese, I mean, that can't be very good for you, can it? No. So with um, grain-fed cattle, um, does the fact that their growth is unnaturally accelerated, does that affect the taste? Good, good question. And the answer is yes, in <laughs> two or three different ways. Uh, one is because it's actually so full of fat, actual flecks of fat out in the muscle. It's very soft to eat. Uh, and, and, then, and the industry uses that as a measure of tenderness in order to market the beef. You know, I think it's just soft. Mm -hmm. uh, my beef is, uh, is a, they are muscle cuts that don't contain so much fat. So you know, there, there is a different mouth feel when you're eating. Uh, but more importantly, uh, it has a different, the fat has a different fatty acid profile or lipid profile. Now that's good for two different reasons. One is, it's healthier for you. There's less fat and the fat that's there is healthier. But number two, the fat literally has a lower melting point. So when you swallow, the, the fat that's in your mouth goes away, like olive oil. Uh, one of the uh, comments I get from customers is that they don't get the cloying, soapy aftertaste from my beef that they get from you know, feedlot beef. And the reason is because it's got the healthier fatty acid profile, the low melting point that causes the beef to be there, that to go away. So it, it tastes cleaner. Previously sold conventional um, gra uh, grain-fed beef. Um, so, what cost you to make this change? What what inspired you to make this transition to yeah. um, grass-fed beef? <clears throat> I graduated from the University of Georgia in 1976. I uh, majored in animal science, and during that era, the only market to sell into was grain-fed beef. Uh, my father had already pretty well transformed our farm into a grain-fed beef farm. And that was the only girl to go to the dance with. So I raised grain-fed beef for the next 20 years. And, you know, it was, it was fanatic. Early on, I loved it. I mean, it's a, uh, yeah, I'm an alpha male, and this is a very, it's a very competitive, uh, you know, I made my cows weigh 600 pounds of weaning last year. They got some new stuff I can give them. They can weigh 620 pounds next year. Or just, and I really love that early on. But as I grew older and, and I guess came to understand how much against nature what I was, you know, the way I was raising my cow really is, uh, I grew uh, increasingly dissatisfied with it. So by the, by the mid 90s, uh, there was a growing trend in the country for uh, meat that was produced naturally. You know, the uh, organic vegetable uh, production and consumption uh, business got traction in the 70s and 80s. It was pretty much a rural industry by the 90s, but, but meat was lagging behind. So when I heard about people that wanted to eat meat that was produced differently, I believed that I could do that. And I set out to change my way. And uh, you know, it was almost a mistake. You know, I went from making money every year to not making money every year until I got my system perfected and found Whole Foods as a market. And since then, uh, things are, are, are really going well. <clears throat> my, my daughter, 24-year-old daughter, has graduated from college and come back to work with me on the farm. And, and I'm, I'm having more fun than I've ever had in my life. 